What's up guys, welcome back to Unreal Dev Hub. If you want to learn how to make games in Unreal Engine 5, you are in the right place. In today's tutorial, we will learn how to use line traces in Blueprint. Let's jump in. We'll start by creating a series of assets in our content drawer. I'll right click, create a new Blueprint class of type actor. We'll call this BP underscore line tracer. We'll create a material by right clicking, creating a new material. We'll call this M underscore simple color. I'll right click one more time and we will create a Niagara system. I'll select this and it will give me the option to use a series of templates. I'm going to use the omnidirectional burst template. I'll cl click this and I'll select create. I'll call this underscore, I'll call this NS underscore line trace hit. We'll start with our material. We're just going to create a quick material, which we'll use to visually, you know, lay out the start and end of our line trace blueprint. So in my content drawer, I will double click on my simple color material. And this is going to be very simple. I'm going to hold three and left click, which will give me a float three or a vector three. I'm going to right click and I'll say convert to parameter and I'll call this color. I'm going to drag this up here, which is my RGBA. I'm going to drag that into base color and I'll hit save. So again, very simple. We'll go back to our content drawer and I'm going to right click this. I'm going to cre uh, create a material instance. I'll call this underscore red. I'm going to duplicate this with control D and I'll call this underscore green. I'm gonna double click to open this up and we're just going to click here, the color parameter we've created. I'm gonna make this green. I'm gonna hit okay. We'll go back to our content drawer. I'm gonna click the red one, click this. And then over here, I'm gonna click here. I'm gonna drag these values to red, hit okay. So we've basically just created our start and end materials for our line trace blueprint. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to go in and create our blueprint. So I'm going to open up my line tracer blueprint. So I'm going to double click and we're going to add a series of components. So in the top left, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a cube and I'm going to press control D to duplicate this. You can also right click and say duplicate, but you can also see the hotkey is right here. So I'm going to click the first one. I'm going to call this start. And so I'll click once and then click again slowly and it'll enter that, or you can use F2 or right click and say rename. I'm gonna rename this second one end. And then we're going to first select our start. We're gonna go to our content drawer. We're gonna grab our green material. So I'm gonna select it here and I'm gonna use the gray arrow here uh, under the material to drop that in. I'm gonna select my end. We're gonna do the same. We're gonna select our simple color red. And then we're going to use the gray arrow here to use the selected asset from the content browser. I'm going to select both of these and I'm using control. So I'm going to select start and I'm going to select end and I'm holding control on my keyboard to select both of these. I'm going to make these really small. So over here in the details panel, <clears throat> I'm going to change the scale to 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. So I've made them small cubes. I'm going to grab my end and I'm going to just change my snap value over here. So the grid snap right here to 500. And then I'm going to pull this out right here. So I'm going to compile this and save. And then we'll just drag this out in our viewport right now so we can see it immediately. So I'm going to grab my BP line tracer and I'll drag it right here. Um, I'm actually going to change my grid snap back in my viewport to 50. I'm going to drag this out and it'll snap onto my grid. We can see now that when I rotate this, I have a green cube and a red cube. Again, no logic yet, just our starting point. So now that we have that, let's add some logic for our line trace. All right, so we're going to open up our line tracer and we're going to go to our event graph. We're going to delete these two functions, the begin overlap and event tick, because we don't need those. And we're gonna use our event begin play. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, I'm gonna pull off here off this execution pin and I will say set timer by event. 
and I'm going to pull off of this event. I'm going to create an event under select function. I'm going to go to create a matching event and we'll call this timer line trace. So we can create a variable here. So I'm going to pull off of time. I'm going to say promote to variable. And over here, now we have the option to name it and we'll call this timer duration for trace. And we'll see here, it's going to say under default, default value, please compile the blueprint. So once I do that, then now we see that this is where we can set the float value for how frequently we, we want the timer to fire this event. So I'll just do one to start. And then we're going to select uh, looping, we're going to change this to true, so that this basically fires this event over and over and over again, every one second. So here, what we're going to do is we're going to pull off and we're going to say line trace by channel. And this is going to allow us to use a trace channel. And then it's going to say between what two points do I want to fire this line trace. So I'm going to grab my start, I'm going to grab my end component. And these are just two meshes that would exist in the world. So I'm going to pull off here and I will say, get world location. I'm going to use this one right here. Click that. I'm going to control C and control V to copy paste that. I'm going to drag this in here. Then I'll drag this first return value into my start and this second one into my end. And so we're going to drag this down here just to get some extra options. And what we're going to do is we're going to change the draw debug type to four durations. Basically, these are a different uh, series of different methods to show the actual line trace and how it hits. We're going to do four duration and we'll just say the draw time is 0.1. So what this is going to do is going to basically draw the line between these two locations in world space, and then it's going to give us information about the hit right here. So before we break out information about the hit, what we're going to do is we're going to use a branch. So I'm going to press B on my keyboard and left click, which is going to give me this branch node, or I could right click and type branch. But again, hotkeys are great. So I'm going to use this I'm going to drag this execution pin in here. I'm going to drag the return value in. You see when we float over, it says true if there was a hit, false otherwise. So basically, we only want to do something if there was a successful hit. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull off of this out hit. And you can see it says actions taking a hit result structure. So what we need to do is this is going to pass on a structure data type. So what we want to do is break hit result. And it's going to take this bit of information here and break out all of the information that's stored in this, uh, this value here. So what we're most concerned about in this situation, even though we get all this different information, like the normal, the location, all these different things, what actor did it hit? We just want the location. So what we're going to do is we are going to right click here and we'll say spawn system at location. I'm going to drag in my true execution pin in here. And I'm going to drag the location of hit here. And then you guessed it, the Niagara system we created earlier, we're going to use that as our system template. So I've selected it here in the content drawer. Then I'm going to use this gray arrow here. You can also go in here and search. But again, because we have easy access to it here, it's easier just to use this gray arrow to select our assets from our content drawer. So now um, we're just going to make a quick edit to our Niagara system, and then we're going to test all this out. Just wait to test and let's fill in these last gaps. Um, so we can see here, this is what our particle system looks like, sort of exploding. We're going to change this just a little bit. Uh, and so just follow me right here. So we're going to go to initialize particle. We're going to change these min and max values from what it is to 0.251. So the shortest particles will live for a quarter of a second. The longest will live for one second. We're going to change the sprite size from min of three to one and max of let's say five. We're going to go down here and we're going to uncheck this gravity force box so that now we can see it doesn't really fall with gravity. So here it's going to fall, but we don't want it to fall just for this circumstance. We're going to grab the shape location. We're going to change the sphere radius to 10. So it's a little, a uh, little sphere. And then 
under add velocity from point where it says origin offset. We're going to change this. We're just going to zero this out by hitting this little uh, arrow here. So now it's zero. And that's basically before the point velocity was happening from below. So it basically made it shoot upwards in space. We just want it to shoot outwards. And we're going to change this, uh, these velocities to something like 25, 100. So now we can see it's just this little poof, which is great. This is what's going to show when we've hit the character. Finally, we're going to go to initialize particle right here. We were already here before, but we're here again. I'm going to grab this arrow right here, this little drop down, and I'm going to use this random range linear color. So I'll click that. And we're going to make it a hit as red. So we're going to change this and we'll make this one like a pink. So now we can see it's uh, reds and pinks in here. And it's basically selecting values between these two colors. I'll compile and I'll save. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to drag, we have this in our environment. I'm going to delete my other ones from before. So if I were to run through this right now, it's going to work successfully, but that's because I've configured something on the character that isn't there by default. So by default in our uh, third person character, the mesh will have uh, collision settings that will not allow this to work. So by default, if I change this to our uh, default collision settings for character mesh, we'll see that the visibility channel is set to ignore line traces. So the trace response for visibility is set to ignore. So we'll see when I run through this and we can see that it's firing off this line trace nothing's going to happen. So the line passes through and it doesn't register a hit. If I go in and change the collision preset, so I've selected mesh in our third person character. In the details panel, if you type collision, and you can also scroll down, but I'm just getting there the quick way. Um, we want to make sure to change this to custom. And then we're also going to want to set our uh, visibility trace response to block. Once we do this, we should see that we're receiving a successful hit. So now we can see between these two, it's going to mark the hitbox and you see the little red square right here. That's where it's hitting. And so now it's going to fail because it's not hitting anything. And then when I walk through, it's going to hit successfully. So now I can grab a few of these and I'm going to duplicate these by pressing alt on my keyboard and dragging with my left mouse. And I've created a few and I can modify these endpoints to create a more diverse array of traces. So for instance, I'll grab this one and I'll bring it down. up and so now it looks like these traces are sort of happening in different start and end locations so like that and I can even grab in my line tracer blueprint I can create a random start time so if I drop this down here I'm gonna pull off of initial start delay and I'll type random float in range and we'll just say between zero and two seconds compile and I'll save. I'm going to go back and I'll press play from here in my viewport and we'll see all of these line traces starting to fi fire off at seemingly random times. So now when I step in the way of these line traces, we're going to see that if not, if I'm not in the way, nothing happens. But when I step in the way of the trace, it's going to hit my character and fire off that particle system. Additionally, if I were to grab objects from the environment that have a successful, so in these, we wanna check that it is blocking the collision trace. If I were to drag this in front of these, it would additionally fire off these particle systems here. So anything in this situation that would have that trace channel would create that block uh, in that line trace and fire off that particle system. 
if you were to apply damage in this situation, you'd basically use a blueprint interface and you could apply it to the hit actor right here instead of just spawning. You do a lot of different things, but basically you could access the actor here and apply whatever logic uh, you want from there. Hope you all learned something useful in today's video. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more Unreal Engine 5 content and tutorials. Have a great day. Thank you.